Hi, I'm Nicholas Dwork, and today we're going to be discussing parallel MRI. Originally, MRI used a single antenna in the shape of a coil to measure its signal. And it's still used today. Here's an example of one by Siemens. The coil is underneath the plastic sheath shown here. Parallel MRI uses multiple coils to simultaneously select signal of the patient from different vantage points. This is a six array flexible coil, and like before, the coils are underneath the sheaths that are comfortable for the patient. Because each coil is measuring data from a slightly different vantage point, the data it collects is different. Here are the Fourier data collected by an eight coil array. And if we perform an inverse discrete Fourier transform on this, we see that these coils were placed around the ankle and foot of a patient. We must then do something to combine these into a single image. What I've shown here is a very simple way to combine these images. You simply take each voxel, square it, sum the corresponding voxels from all the coils, and square root the result. Each coil provides unique information about the imaged object. We can exploit this information so that fewer samples are required for a high quality image. This allows us to collect less data, which can be collected in a shorter amount of time. And this has several advantages. For example, it provides less of an opportunity for motion to corrupt the image, which is important for patients that have difficulty remaining still, like young children or patients in pain. So let's talk about how this works. I'm gonna let I here represent the actual image. S1 is going to be the sensitivity of the first coil. That is, S1i is how much data is measured from each location from the first coil. The Fourier transform simulates the MRI machines. So this is the Fourier data of the image we just saw. And finally, we're going to isolate just data that was collected. In this case, we're collecting vertical strips of data and a region centered on the zero value. If our image is correct, then this value on the left DFS1I should approximately equal the data that was collected by the MRI machine from the first coil. We could repeat it for the second coil, and indeed we can repeat it for all eight coils. These expressions can all be combined into one single expression as shown here. This is now a matrix equation. And to make it look nicer, we're going to define some variables. The diagonal matrix of Ds will be represented by a bold D, and etc. for the other matrices. This is now the expression we have. And so the question is, how do we find the i that fulfills this expression? One way to do that is to find the image i that minimizes the difference between d, f, s, i, and b. If this is the L2 norm that we're minimizing, then this, the solution to the above optimization problem is just the pseudo inverse of dfs times b. The solution i star, though, is often determined using a numerical algorithm like LSQR because these matrices are so large. All right, so here's the data from the eight coils. Here we're isolating just every third column except for these middle portions. Here's the image that gets reconstructed after solving the optimization problem. The image reconstructed with all the data is on the left. The image reconstructed with just a subset of the data is on the right. And you see it's a very good image. It's a high quality image. It's noisier because the signal to noise ratio with MRI is a function of the amount of data collected. So with less data, we get more noise but it's still a high quality image and maybe its robustness to motion improves the overall quality sufficiently that it's better to take the image on the right rather than the image on the left. Here are two notable references. Thank you for your attention.